Hey, it's Alex. Today we're going to talk about why I switched from Nikon to Canon for my film shooting, and why I chose the Canon EOS 1V when I made the switch. Okay, so in October of 2020, I sold my Nikon F100, even though I love that camera and I do actually miss it quite a lot, and bought the Canon EOS 1V. I do want to add that this is not a full review. This is more of a story, and I will be doing a review about this camera at some point in the future, but that day is not today. There are three main reasons I made this switch. Number one. The Nikon F-mount compatibility chart is an absolute mess. It takes almost a degree to try and figure out if your lens is going to be compatible with your camera. Whereas with an EOS camera, math is math. A lens is a lens. It just, if it fits, it works. At the time, I was also using a Nikon Z7 and I had the 105mm f1.4. Beautiful lens, but it didn't work on the F100. None of the film cameras support electronic aperture. And the newest lenses, like the 105 1.4, the 500 f 5.6 PF, which fair enough, most people wouldn't buy, but I plan to buy as a wildlife photographer. And even the 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8 VR from Nikon uses an electronic aperture. So it's completely incompatible with the film cameras. Whereas with Canon, I can slap a modern EF lens on the oldest EF SLR body and it just works. Two. As a direct follow-on from that, I really didn't like the 24-70 f2.8G. I tried two different copies of it, but it just, it has very bad chromatic aberration. It's not that sharp at the longer end, unless you stop down to 5.6 or so. And I don't expect the lens to be tack sharp at its widest aperture, but I expect it to be usable, especially when it's a pro, you know, gold ring, you know, their version of the Canon red ring L lens. For such a professional lens to perform so badly, it really disappointed me, and it also didn't hold up on the 45 megapixel sensor of the Z7 at all. And I had serious issues with compatibility with third-party lenses. I tried lenses like the Tokina 24-70mm f2.8, and that didn't work too well on the Z7, so I then would have had to buy one lens for the Z7 and another for the f100, and that just didn't make any sense to me at all. 3. This could be remedied by purchasing a more expensive Nikon F-mount film SLR camera like the F5 or F6, but it, the F100 just isn't built that well. The rear door is notorious for breaking and it's a very lightweight and comfortable camera and I love the size of it, I do miss that, but it wouldn't hold up to the rigors of what I've put the 1V or even the 1D that I'm recording on right now through. It just wouldn't hold up to that. And that's not really a knock against Nikon specifically, but it did play into my decision to switch to Canon and buy the 1V specifically. I also want to talk about three things that I do regret about the Switch. Number one, the Nikon cameras have a D-pad. I really don't like this quick control, main control dial system for changing the autofocus points on the older Canon cameras that don't have an AF joystick. You don't really have the fluidity of changing your autofocus points that you do with a D-pad, and that is objectively worse. Two, I obviously don't have them side by side, but the F100 is a lot smaller than the 1V. It's a lot harder to carry the 1V around just because it is bigger and heavier. Three, the F100 uses double A's and that's something that really is a big benefit to it. It's a lot harder to get the two CR5 batteries that the 1V uses and they are a lot more expensive. So why did I choose the 1V specifically as my film camera of choice? I could have spent a lot less money on the EOS 5, the EOS 3, or even the older 1 series cameras like the EOS 1 or EOS 1N. Well, there are four main reasons. Number one, pro ergonomics. I mentioned that. This camera is built like a tank. I've used this in torrential rain that was heavy enough that even in a pocket in a pretty water resistant but not waterproof jacket, my phone just shut off. But this thing did not care whatsoever. It just kept going and there were no issues whatsoever with it, which was fantastic. Now, to be fair, I was using L-series glass. I don't think this lens is even that weather sealed. There's a rear gasket on it, but yeah, it held up really well. And I know that the F100 would not have survived or at least not performed as well in those conditions. 
number two or number 1.5, I suppose, because this thing is built so heavily, I can swing the 300 millimeter f2.8 off it, no problem. I can just carry it around by the camera body. And that's a lot more comfortable than carrying it around by the tripod mount on the lens. And as someone who shoots a lot with that lens, that is a big deal. Carrying a big lens on the F100 always made me a bit uncertain as to whether or not I could carry it by the camera. And I have to support the lens a lot more than I would when I'm shooting with this. Number three, and I don't know if this applies to the other one series cameras or even the single digit cameras like the EOS 3 or EOS 5, maybe it does. So correct me or let me know in the comments if I am wrong about this. But as far as I'm aware, the EOS 1V is the only camera where I can, see I have a roll of film in this, I can rewind it here right now. And when I crack it open, the leader is left out. Now that's an optional setting on this camera, but it's really nice to be able to use this to actually hot swap films. I have four half used rolls of film in the camera right now. And it's amazing just to be able to not have to commit to an entire roll. It's nothing the same as using a camera with removable backs, like a V-System Hasselblad or your Mamiya RB or RZ67, but it is extremely convenient. Like if I'm going out to shoot, but I have half a roll of slide film or something like that left in the camera, I can just rewind it put it in the drawer, pop it back in the camera when I want to shoot it again, and then just shoot a bunch of blank frames until I get to where I was, and then usually take one more just to be safe. And that's helped by the little viewfinder mask that this camera has. And I do that all the time. It's really handy, and it's something I really, really appreciate about this camera. Of course, I have to keep notes of how many shots I've taken on a given roll, but a bit of Sharpie does that no problem. The fourth and final reason, and this is really the one that made me choose the 1V over the EOS 3, which is an amazing camera in its own right. I don't want to knock that. This camera uses a mechanical system for measuring the film advance. The camera will measure the number of sprocket holes that have traveled to measure how many frames have advanced. So you can get accurate, consistent frame spacing. But this camera does so mechanically rather than with an infrared LED like the EOS 3 and the other EOS cameras do. And this means that to my knowledge, this is the only camera in the EOS lineup that can be used with infrared film without fogging it as you shoot. Now I have a roll of Ilford SFX 200 that I have yet to shoot, mostly because of the weather conditions in recent months, but I'm going to pick up an R72 filter sometime in the next couple of months and be able to enjoy this camera in a way that I want to do. Because as I've mentioned, one of the reasons I love film is that there are certain things you can't do, at least easily on a digital camera that you can do comparatively easy on a film camera. And shooting infrared film is one of those things. You cannot shoot infrared without a modified digital camera in 99.9% .9 of cases. There are probably some DSLR out there that has pretty good infrared sensitivity. But I can do that on the 1V and that's one of the things that attracted me to this camera over the others. So this video has been more of a story rather than me really trying to inform people about a specific topic. But I hope that some of the tidbits of information in this video, like the door issues with the Nikon F100 or the infrared capabilities of the EOS 1D might help inform you in some way yourself. And maybe you'll find that information useful now or at some point down the line. Thank you very much for your time and I'll see you soon with a My First Roll video. Ciao.